Hello everyone. My name is Aniket and I am from CDAC Mumbai. Welcome back to the series of CCAT preparation. In this session, we are going to see few MCQ examples on data structure and algorithm. Let me share my screen. So let's see first example. So this is the first example. Which of the following is not a real life example of a queue? So what is queue? Queue is a data structure which follows FIFO principle. What is FIFO? FIFO is first in, first out principle. So let's see what are the options. The option number A is waiting in a line to order food at a restaurant. Option number B is waiting in a line to buy a movie tickets. Option C is managing tasks on a CPU. Option D is using a stack of dishes. So basically, the first three options, if you see, the first three options follows first in, first out principle. So the correct answer of this question is option number D. Now let's see the second example. The second example is implement a circular queue using an array. Which of the following condition should be checked to determine if the circular queue is empty? So the options are front is equal to equal to minus one. Option B is front is equal to equal to rare. Option C is rare is equal to equal to minus one. And option D is equal to front is equal to equal to rare plus one modulus of size. So basically what is circular queue? Circular queue is, uh, is a queue in which first element and the last element are connected. So the first option front is equal to equal to minus one. This will be correct in which case if the uh, queue is a simple queue, not a circular queue. The option number B, which is front equal to equal to rare, that is the correct answer of an, a circular queue of an empty circular queue because here front is equal to equal to rare. That means there is no element in that circular queue. So option number B is the correct answer. Let's see the next example. So the question is, what is the index number of the last element of an array with nine elements? And the options are nine, eight, zero, and programmer defined. So basically what is an array? Array is a data structure in which we store similar elements in a continuous memory allocation. So let me show how to represent an array. So basically, uh, this is how we represent an array. Over here, I have taken the array of nine size, nine elements, and these are the nine elements. So here we can say that these are the nine elements in an array, but the array index always start with a zero, zero, one, two, like this. Okay. So as the question is the index number of the last element of an array with nine elements. So the last element index will be eight. So the answer is B. Let's see the next example. This is a code snippet and we have to find the output of this snippet. So basically in this example, we have given a 2D array. For better clarification, I have represented that 2D array over here. Int A, 2, 3, where what is this? 2 is a number of rows and 3 is a number of columns. So basically insert these values in this array. 1, 2, 3. These are the 3 uh, columns and 2 rows. 4, 5. But we have not given the value of 6th element. Now let's see the example. Int, uh, over here 2 variables are there. Int i is equal to 0 and j is equal to 0. Again there are 2 for loops for iteration. For uh, first for loop is for i is equal to zero, i is less than two, i plus plus, and for i uh, for j is equal to zero, j is less than three, j plus plus one, j plus plus. So it will move to the c out. So what what will be the first output? Let me annotate for you. The first will be like a zero and j0 for the, the output will be 1 right for the second time j will increment by 1 
so it will again enter to this for loop so a 0 j will be 1 and this will be the value so it will 2 now third for third iteration again it will move in this for loop because j is equal to 2 right now a 0 and j is 2 and for this the value is 3 now it will move out from this for loop because j is 4 right now when increment is there now it will move to the first for loop again and the value of i will be 1 and value of j will be 0 again 0 it, because it will move to the for loop this for loop again so it the value is 4 again it will iterate in inner for loop a the value of i is 1 and the value of j will increase to 1 so it will try and the last will be a of i is 1 and j is 2 but we have not given the value of this element so basically whenever there is a no element given the value will be set to its default value so the, uh, the data type of this 2d array is int so default value of int is 0 so this this is the output we will get so what is the output is 1 2 3 4 5 0 the option a is the correct answer in this example this is another example in which we have to found, find the postfix form of the expression first we need to solve the brackets first we need to know the precedence so let's solve this problem let me annotate it for you first we need to solve this bracket then this bracket right so let's start so we will start uh, we will solve the first bracket that will be a b plus star then second bracket c d star minus e bracket complete star f divided by d. next step will be again we have to solve the second bracket a b plus star c d star e minus bracket complete star f divided by g this third step will be we have to solve these two brackets so it will be like a b plus b d star e minus star bracket complete star f divided by g now we have to solve this again the next will be a b plus c d star e minus star here f and star divided by g the last will be a b plus c d star e minus star f star g divided so this is the final solution so let's see which option is matching with this solution so option a b plus c d star e minus star f star g so option number three is matching with this answer so the answer of this question is option c let's see the next example the example is where is linear searching used basically in data structure there are two types of searching one is linear search and another one is binary search linear search is used in an unsorted list where binary search is used on a sorted list so let's see what are the options 
the first option is when the list has only a few elements second option is when performing a single search in an unordered list the third option is used all the time and the fourth option is when the list has only few elements and when performing a single search in an unordered list so basically linear search is used when the elements are very few and on on a so unordered list so the option d is the correct answer of this question let's see the next example what is the best case and worst case time complexity of ordered linear search so basically what is time complexity time complexity is the time required to complete a particular task so following our options order of n log n order of log n option b is order of log n order of n log n option c is order of n and order of 1 and option d is order of 1 of order of n so basically whenever you ask the best case in that scenario what if the element is present at the first position so the best case time complexity is always order of 1 in linear search and what is the worst case time complexity that the element is present at the last so it will be like order of n so the option d is the correct answer in this example let's see the next example in a stack if a user tries to remove an element from an empty empty stack it is called as the options are underflow empty collection overflow and garbage collection so basically the stack is empty so these are the options so the answer is underflow because we do not call it as an empty collection we do not call it as an overflow overflow is a condition when the stack is full garbage collection is not a correct option in this example so the correct option is underflow let's see the next example the example is the height of a binary tree is the maximum number of edges in any root to leaf path the maximum number of nodes in a binary tree of height h is we have to calculate the number of nodes of a binary tree with height h so basically what is binary tree binary tree is a data structure nonlinear data structure in which node has at most two children that is either 0 1 or 2 over here we have to consider the maximum number of nodes that it means that every node will have two children so let's uh, in this example you might get confused with what kind of what height we should consider for the root node so over here it is not mentioned the height of the root node so we will consider the height of root node as a zero let me annotate it for you the height of root node is zero the height of this is one and the height of this level is two. let's see the options and solve so for the first option it is 2 raised to s so the height of the given uh, means the height of this tree is 2 so 2 raised to 2 2 raised to 2 minus 1 so the answer is for this option is 2 minus 1 that is 3 which is not correct let's see the second option 2 raised to h minus 1 so 2 raised to h is three, uh, 2 minus 1 complete minus 1 so it is 2 raised to 1 minus 1 so 2 minus 1 it is 1 again it is not correct let's see the third option which is equal to 2 raised to h plus 1 minus 1 so 2 raised to 2 plus 1 minus 1 so 2 raised to 2 plus 1 is 2 raised to 3 that is 8 minus 1 which is equal to 7 and this is the correct option as we can see in this binary tree the number of nodes are 7 so no need to check the last option so option c is the correct answer of this example
This is another example of binary search tree. So the question is construct a binary search tree by using post order sequence given below. The post order sequence is 2, 4, 3, 7, 9, 8, and 5. So basically, what is uh, travel sir? There are basically three types of travel sir in binary search tree. First one is in order, pre-order, and post-order. In an in order, we have to first visit left child, then root and right child. In pre-order, we have to visit root, left child, and then right child. And in post-order, we have to visit first left, left child, right child, and then root. Let me draw a diagram for you. In this case, Okay, so here we have to find the post order. Let me. So basically, we have to first visit the left side. So here is the root element and we have to visit the left side. So the left element will be first is two, right? And we have to visit the right element of that. That is four. Here it will be four. Here it is 4. Now we'll move to the root. And here it will be 3. Now the left subtree is completed. Then we will move to the right subtree. Now here also, the uh, we, when we move to the right subtree, we will again move to the left side of that right subtree. So here, 7. Then to the right side that is here 9 and then root that is over here 8 and the last element the root element that is 5 5 so this is the uh, pre post order tree let me draw the again lines for your reference And let's compare our solution with the options. If we compare the options with uh, option A, then this is not correct. At it, it is given uh, in this one. So there is no element one in the example. Uh, if we compare option number B, that is five, three, eight. 2, 4, 7, 9. So option number B is the correct answer. Thank you for your attention. If you like the video, please do like, share and subscribe. For similar kind of content, you can check the description box. Thank you very much.